All right, now for the second part of our review, we're going to be talking about the hardware. So what's inside of this box? Well, let's open it and see. I actually have opened it before, so it's not uh, the first time I unpacked this box. Um, inside there is uh, a black bag for electrostat electrostatic components and inside of it, it actually makes it difficult because of the heat sink. All right, um, so inside of that black bag, we see the NVIDIA Jetson Nano a module already installed for us on the carrier board. So the other content is very simple. Um, there is this uh, <laughs> nice, cute paper stand, which you use for putting your Jetson Nano on during the operation, which is quite important because there are all those um, headers, all those uh, pins here and other electronic components and you really don't want them to short circuit if you have something metallic on your table. So this is a safety precaution. Um, and another one, we have a very short getting started manual um, and basically that's it. There are no other things uh, in the box and uh, it's actually quite interesting they include this paper stand. Uh, I mean, this is just paper, but it's uh, very considerate. For example, a Raspberry Pi, as you might know, comes without any stand or cases. All right, so let's have a look at the board itself. Um, first of all, there is a slot for micro SD card right here on the back. Uh, the slot itself is actually in the module, not on the carrier board. And I already got my micro SD card here. Uh, there is a heat sink right on the module. And uh, there is no fan. Fan is optional here. And I would say that it is actually quite necessary to have a fan because during the operation it was getting noticeably hot. Next one, let's have a look at the carrier board. So I remind you, the carrier board is all the rest here, apart from the module itself. Um, we have the power LED right here. This is the only LED indicator on the board. It indicates if it's powered on. Now, there is sodium connector. This is where the module connected to carrier board. Um, there is HDMI and DP connectors here, and there are four USB 3 type A. Each one of them can be obviously used for connecting USB devices like keyboard, mouse, and so on and so forth. Um, and each stack of them can output one ampere. So that would be two amperes for all four USBs. Now, next one is the camera connector right here. It's actually the same style as Raspberry Pi camera connector uh, and you can use Raspberry Pi camera module version 2 or other compatible cameras. Next one is the fan control header uh, which is supposed to be right here. It's right here, those four pins uh, in case you want to have the fan installed on the heatsink. There is M2 KEE connector for wireless networking cards. Um, you cannot see it right now because it's under the module. We're gonna talk a little bit about the power, the options for powering your Jetson Nano. Here we can see and there is a DC barrel jack which takes 5 volts 4A, maximum of 4A current. And this is for power hungry applications. And normally if you just have your Jetson Nana connected and you know developing some applications in it, you might want to power it with a micro USB 2.0 connector right here. Uh, it takes 5 watts to amperes. Let's talk about the headers. We can see many headers right here um, and they they, they have their own use. 
Um, so let's start with um, here we have the power over Ethernet connector at the top of our carrier board. It's actually located right here. So we can also power Jetson Nano over the Ethernet jack. Now, next we have a, a big row of GPIO connectors, which are divided between power pins and the interface signal pins. And all signals use 3.3 volts for output and input. Um, now let's see, there is also 8 pin button header a right here. So it controls some very important functions. You can uh, have a look at the manual, but I can see that um, it enables or disables auto power on. Then there is power on. If auto power on is disabled, there is uh, there are two pins for resetting the system. And then there is uh, force recovery mode pins. And also there is a serial port connections here for UART console. Again, for all those pins and their exact mapping, you can have a look at the manual. As you can see, obviously there is an Ethernet connector and um, this is basically it. Now let's do a quick size comparison between, this is the Jetson Nano on the carrier board. And here lying around I have my old Jetson TX1. Um, actually, right here, this is this is the module itself with a heat sink. Uh, and this is the, the carrier board, a um, miniature carrier board, third party. This is not official NVIDIA. So that would be it. Actually, you can see that Jetson Nana, the module itself, is a little bit smaller. And let's compare it to Raspberry Pi as well. So here I have Raspberry Pi, module 3B+. Um, if you just compare the size of the carrier board to the size of the single board computer Raspberry Pi, the, the carrier board is bigger. But you got to keep in mind that actually all the processing is done on the module right here. And the module is smaller than the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I also have that board that you might have seen in one of the previous videos, which is uh, Cypeed, Cypeed makes bits, which also can do uh, CNN, Convolutional Neural Networks Acceleration, but it's just a microcontroller. You cannot run uh, Linux on this board. So this one is really teensy comparing to all three, but it's different one. Okay, and then finally, Let's go over the stuff that you will need for working with Jetson Nano. You will need, uh, obviously, the keyboard and the mouse. Then you will need uh, a power, power supply. And I'm using this uh, USB power supply uh, rated for 5 volts and 2 amperes. It works pretty good. Did not have complaints. Um, next one. Unfortunately, uh, my, my screen, my monitor is quite old, so it doesn't have an HDMI connection. And I have to use the, those adapters, HDMI to VGA adapters. Uh, and I found out, that first of all, uh, on the website, NVIDIA's website, it says they are not supported. Uh, but the white one, there is no indication of what company did, made it. The white one did not work, but I was surprised that the black one did work. And again, no indication of what company made them. So this is hit and miss here, really. Ideally, if you have a monitor that is capable of connecting HDMI cable, it's much better. For the internet connection, you obviously can just use Ethernet. Um, there is also option to use Wi-Fi dongles, but again, it's hit and miss right now because not all of them are supported out of the box. Like I was trying to use this uh, Mercury MW300UM uh, Wi-Fi dongle 
and despite I could connect to the internet but uh, there was huge packet loss and the connection wasn't stable so I think in the future there will be a, a list of Wi-Fi dongles and HDMI to VGI adapters support it right now there is not so do some experiments so that was it for the hardware part of the review and next one is a software part where we're going to do the first boot and run through some examples and tests by the way for the for that software part i also want to tell you that uh, the standard Jetson Nano SD card image they have on NVIDIA website requires at least 16 gigabytes uh, SD card but if you want to try JetBot image uh, they also have JetBot image it needs more than 64 gigabytes SD card which means that uh, at least I would say that you probably will need 128 uh, so this is something to keep in mind